Today, I'm back with another great collection of free online tools to help you get more out of your web design skills. First of all, let's take a look at Web Code Tools. So Web Code Tools is a great way to generate various different types of code, from HTML to CSS, schema markup, and lots more. You can even do some simple animation inside here. Let's take a quick look at a couple of examples. So first of all, you can see on the left-hand side, we've got things broken down into the various different kinds of generators we have access to. We could open any of these up, and as you can see under CSS, we've got things for animation, backgrounds, box model, color, and so much more. If we open up HTML, you can see we've got lots of ways to control input fields, media, text, and lots and lots of other useful things. You can see we've got CSS generators. Let's click to open that up. And inside, we've now got a breakdown of all the different kinds of options we have for generating CSS code. So for example, Let's go ahead and take a look at something simple like a background gradient. And we now get a set of controls that allow us to do exactly what the name suggests, is create gradients. So for example, you can see we can choose our starting color. Let's go for a sort of reddish orange color. Choose our secondary color. Go for something like a purpley kind of color. And you can see we can also go ahead now and adjust the position of the gradient. So you can see we can bring either of these little slider points in to create different effects. We can also go ahead and choose different types of gradient. We can choose between linear and radial gradient. So you can see, as the name suggests, we get a radial gradient, choose about a linear, and now inside the linear, we can adjust the angle. So you can fine tune and get this exactly where you want it to be. And then all you need to do is copy the little block of code, drop that into your design, and you've got a you know, custom gradient. If we take a look at something a little bit more advanced, like the keyframe animation, you can see we can go ahead and we can animate in different ways. We've got for attention, we can animate the background, basic animation, entrance, and exit animation. And you can see each of these has a ton of different options. If you've got something like attention, you can see we can go ahead and we can choose between various different types. So blink, bounce, jello, pulse, you kind of get the idea. You can then go ahead, you can give this a name, adjust things like the duration. So if you want to make it last a little longer, you can increase that. That'll kind of slow the animation down or make it just last a little longer. You can adjust the timing. You can set your easing options inside there. And as you can see, there's a ton of easing options in there. So you can really get in and customize exactly what you want. You can even set this to be infinite looping. And then all you need to do is grab the relevant code. You can see we've got the selector code and we've got the CSS code. Copy those, use them where relevant. That's web code tools, but there's so much more you can do inside you. I really would recommend just jumping in, testing things out, and just have a little bit of a play around. It's a really good, fun place to play. Next on the list, we've got useanimations.com, which is a collection of animated icons that you can use in your designs, both free and commercial. It uses the Creative Commons licensing, so you do need to give attribution, and obviously make sure you check out the licensing terms to make sure that you're covering everything you need. But once you've checked that out and you're happy with everything, there's a great little collection here of animated icons you can use for various different design projects. You can see it's multi-platform, Responsive design uses both SVG and Lottie options, so scaling and quality should not be an issue. And if we take a little look, you can see there's a lot of great options. It's not the biggest collection, but it should cover you for a lot of use cases, and it's great if you just want to use these for prototyping to demonstrate the kind of thing you can do with a client. As you can see, all the main contenders are here, things like your navigation, your actions, your various different options then for content, toggle options, media, and so on. And you can see if we hover over, it shows us the animation. We can hover over the next one. We can click on it and it'll show you the animations like there. And you can go ahead, download these and use them inside your projects. So that's useanimations.com, a nice little collection of animated icons. Next on our list is Diff Checker. If you're working with clients and you have revisions and it's kind of difficult to see what's changed inside those, could be images, PDFs, anything like that. This is a great little website that allows you to quickly upload two different versions of the same file, and then you can see exactly what differences there are between them. So for example, you can see we've got across the top text, images, PDFs, and so on. Let's choose the images option, and I'm simply gonna drag in two of the same image with a couple of different variations applied to them. So now with the image uploaded, you can see we now get a preview, which we can take a look and slide between the two to see if there's any easy visible differences. You can see, 
we've seen this kind of thing plenty of times before. What we can also do is we can jump this into split view so we can see things side by side and compare things. We can adjust the zoom. We can go into fade, and this will kind of show an overlay of the image to see if there's anything really easily visible. We can go into difference, which allows us to see a kind of difference map on there. We can set downloadable, and we can also go into file details and find out if there's any differences with things like the file type, the size, the visible resolution, those kinds of things. So it's a really simple example with this, but it's really useful when you're dealing with things like PDFs and text and so on. So once we put the text into the side-by-side -side comparison, we can click on Find Difference. So there we go. We now get a side-by-side -side comparison telling us exactly what the differences are. You can see we've got removals, we've got additions. We can visibly see the differences between where extra spaces or paragraphs have been placed in there, any word changes, those kinds of things. It's very quick and easy to see those differences. You can even go ahead and open up Compare and Merge. You can clear this and you can see there's lots of different options. So that's Diff Checker, something that can be really useful when you're working with clients that are making changes and you just want to make sure you can quickly Quickly check where those changes are to see that you've actually carried out whatever updates you needed to do. Next up, we've got typescale.com. This is a great way of being able to visually check and adjust your typography settings. If we take a look, it's a very, very simple interface. On the left-hand side, you can see we can set our base size. Now, generally, this will be 16 pixels, as I've covered in UI UX videos before, but you can change that if you want to. And then you can use the scale options. You can see we can set things through various different sizes, like major thirds, minor thirds, and so on. And these are different scales. So for example, you can see if we went for minor second, that's 1.067. So if we click on that, you can see it's a much smaller variation. However, if we go for something like the golden ratio, you can see we get a much larger variation. So you can very easily customize this. Major third is probably where you're going to sit for most use cases. But you can also go ahead and change this to whatever font you're using. So let's go for something like prompt. You can see we can adjust the weight, set that to something like 300. And now we can visually see before we make any decisions is there enough of a difference in the size of the text, the typography? Is the font scaling, the font size, the font weight, all those things work in the way that we want. We can even pull over this right-hand pane, which will give us a different way of working. You can see this now shows us what it would look like on the page. So again, we can see, we can say body font, we can adjust the body font and how it different from the heading font. We can go ahead and we can make changes to the base size, set that to 18, for example, and you can see now the difference that actually has. We can change colors, line height, background colors, all those kinds of good things. So typescale.com is a really good way of being able to quickly and easily create or just use basic starting points for great typography separation and visual hierarchy. Next on the agenda is Picula.co. This is a great little website that allows you to simply put in a word or words, and then it will generate a color palette for you. And then you can use that as a starting point. Let me give you an example. Let's come down to the, the color of anything, and we'll put summer. We'll just hit enter on there, and you can see now that comes up with a color palette that has colors that it would consider to be something to do with summer. Our sky blues, our green for the grass, those kinds of things. We can also come in and change that to something else. So let's just say ocean breeze. And you can see that that comes up with a different color palette that signifies the ocean. You've got your sand colors, your different aqua colors, blues, those kinds of things. Now, you can also go ahead, come over any of these colors that you like. Go ahead and simply click on the hexadecimal code. You click on that, it tells you the hex is copied. We can now use that whenever we want. We can also pin our colors. As you can see at the top, I've already got one pinned. But if I click on this one, that now pins that to the top color palette. And we can choose four colors inside there to create our own custom color palette. We've also got the option for this little image overlay, which what this will do is it will kind of encapsulate the color and where it's kind of grabbed that color from and how it conveys itself to the topic that you put in. It's a really cool little way of working and creating color palettes. And if you want to, you can go ahead and share your color palette once you've created one. Simply click on the share button, and then you can click on the link to share to Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and so on. So check out picula.co if you want some color inspiration using any kind of keyword that you want. Pretty cool. 
Now, when you're building modern websites, keeping up with graphic trends can be something quite difficult and finding really good illustrations is something that can be quite costly. However, using a blush dot design, you have a little secret tool in your arsenal that really does open up some great options. Let me just quickly show you what I'm talking about. This is the blush dot design website. And as you can see, we've got a nice little animated illustration of the types of illustrations you can get. And you can go through and you can find out more information about how it all works. But let me just show you in a really quick nutshell. Let's create a random illustration. Now what we can do is we can customize pretty much every aspect of this. You can see we've got the scene and we've got the sitting character. So we can select either of these and we can go ahead and start customizing various different parts of that illustration. You can see we can go in and change the background color. We can shuffle this if we want to, but we can also come in and customize all the body parts to totally change the look and feel of any of these aspects. Let's choose our little sitting character first of all. Let's just do something like change, put him on a stool. And there we go, updates itself in real time. We can choose an armchair for example, so now he's just chilling out in an armchair. We can say we want to change the upper body parts, so we'll just change it to this one. We'll change the overall hairstyle if we want to. Let's give it ponytails, which kind of looks a bit strange, but hey-ho. And if you want to change to sideburns, you can change the facial expression. You can go ahead and change the glasses, or you can take the glasses off completely. So you can see you can very quickly customize it. Then once you've finished with customizing that aspect, we can simply come into the option for the scene. And now we could change this if we wanted to, so we can change the look of the individual inside the mirror. We can change the face. We can change any kind of expressions that are going on, all those kinds of things. And once you're finished, you can now go ahead and you can download this, share it, or save it. You can even come in and just adjust things like the colors and so on. So we change the elements, we could change that to something like this, and you can see now that updates the colors inside there. So we can very quickly create customized layouts using starting point illustrations to get exactly what we want. And there's so much more that's available on the Blush Dot Design website. It is recommended to check it out. But even if you only use this aspect, it gives you a ton of illustrations you can customize and do whatever you want to fit into your custom designs. Now sticking with illustrations, design, and great looking freebies, you want to check out scribbles.design. That's scribbles with three Bs. And this is a collection of, as his name suggests, funky scribbles. So if you want to create that sort of modern looking vibe where you've got these kind of hand-drawn rough illustrations, very in keeping to what we just saw with the illustrated characters, then maybe scribbles is something you want to check out. You simply go ahead, download it, and then you've got a collection of vector and customizable color options to create whatever you kind of want. And you can see underneath we've got an example of what these could look like, how you could use them in your designs, and just have a little bit of fun with them. Like I said, they are free. Again, always check out the, the license agreement that goes with these kinds of things to make sure that you are doing exactly what you need to be able to use them. But check out scribbles.design. It's kind of a little funky little website, just one of those quick ones I wanted to throw in for you. Now, if you build websites for a living, there's an awful lot to remember with pretty much every stage of the design, from creating your login pages, your home pages, your forms, all those kinds of things. And this is where checklist.design could be really, really useful for you. It's basically a collection of checklists that you can use to tick off as you do things. So for example, you could be creating a login page. So let's open up the login checklist. And you can see, let's go ahead and open login from there. And now this gives us 10 different things that we should or could do when we create a login page. So it's a great little reminder. You can see once we've added the logo in, we can check that off. Once you've added the title, the account identification, the password, and the link to reset password, we're going through our list, taking things off, making sure we've done them. It tells us how many more things we've got available to do. And then once we've finished, we know we've done what we need to do for that particular part of our site. It's a really simple concept. There's tons of different options inside you, from flows to elements to various different things. So for example, you want to check out exactly how submitting a form is going to work. Well, let's open that up. And we can see now exactly how that flow could or should go to give a seamless experience. The same goes to things like sign up, those kinds of things. You can come into your elements. You can see we've got various different types of elements. Or we can simply stick with the pages option to go through and make sure that when we're creating blog posts and so on, all these little things are checked off to make sure that we meet everything that needs to be done to launch that page, site, or whatever we're actually designing. So check out checklist.design. Pretty useful little freebie. 
Now, if you've been working in design for any period of time, you can't help but notice that gradients have been something that have been around for quite some time, especially in web design. We're also seeing now that more complex gradients are being introduced into the mix. Basically, these are called mesh gradients because we can use multiple different colors, mesh those together in a kind of blurred palette. Now, creating them is something that you may have not really looked into and you want a quick and easy way of doing just that, or you may just want some inspiration. Meshgradient.com could be the perfect site for you to do just that. When you go in, you can see we now have two iterations of the same gradient mesh. We have a selection of colors at the bottom, which we can easily come in and change those to whatever we want. So let's just say we want to set this to a reddish color. We click outside and you see now that updates exactly on the screen. We can grab any of these little square boxes and move those around. And they are basically how we can adjust the gradient mesh color and move that around our design. So you can see we can easily move these around. Pretty cool, pretty easy. We can go and add extra points in if we want to, and we can move those around as well. You can see as we do that, if we look on the right-hand side, we can see the differences that are being made to our gradient mesh as I move this around. Move any of these points, and you can see things update in real time on the right-hand side. If you want to remove any of these points, we can simply hold the Control and Shift key down, click, and that will remove that point from our gradient mesh. We've also got these options at the top. We can click to randomize the colors in our gradient mesh. So we click on that. You can see that'll randomize them. Keep on doing that till we find a palette we like, and we can then adjust things using the same method I've just shown you. We can also go ahead, reset the mesh. We can take a look at a gallery of meshes that other people have created, and we can click to open these up and then start editing them to do whatever we want. We can also find information about how to work with this, the keyboard shortcuts, what's being used, those kinds of things. And finally, once we're happy, we can click on export. And that will now download a PNG of our gradient mesh, which we can then use in our designs and do whatever we want. So if you're looking for inspiration or a quick and easy way of being able to create mesh gradients, check out meshgradient.com to do just that. Now, if you are working in design, but you want some inspiration to expand your tool set and your knowledge, you may want to check out Design Principles. This is a great little collection of simplified articles that give you the key points to achieve a specific outcome. Let's take a quick look. Let's go in and take a look at, for example, the examples. We can now filter this down. And currently, at the time of recording this, there's 195 examples on here. But let's say we want to take a look at something like people. You can see we've got different guides now. So 20 guiding principles for experienced design. If we click and open that up, that now gives us a breakdown of those 20 key points in a really simple bite-sized way of reading. We don't need to go and buy a book and have tons and tons of information overload. We can simply use these checklists to kind of go through and see, are we meeting those different points? Can we integrate those into our design process and design principles? This is a great little resource with, like I say, nearly 200 different articles that can help just open the ideas up to different ways in which you can create better designs for various different platforms and different use cases. So that's Design Principles, which is at principles.design. As always, all the links are in the description. Next up, we've got the Niku collection of 3D illustrations you can use in your designs. This is kind of geared towards working inside Figma, but you could use these for other things if you wanted to. Obviously, check out the licensing to make sure that everything is covered if you want to use these. But it's a pretty cool little collection of characters and objects. So if you open up the components, you can see inside there, we've got a great little collection of different characters. While the characters are cool, I quite like the images that are being created for things like laptops, those kinds of things. And I think there's a lot of use cases where you could use this in your designs. All you need to do is go ahead and duplicate this into your Figma account. Once you've done that, you'll have those illustrations inside your Figma account, and you can then use those inside your designs and do whatever you want. You can see they're great looking little designs. They're nice high resolution images, so you can use those on websites with no problem. And as you can see, once you start to use these in your designs, they're actually pretty cool. You can easily come in, integrate that into however you want to work. They work really, really well with dark backgrounds as well. But you could use these in any way whatsoever. There's tons of available options for Figma, so check those out. But I really like the Niku collection. So have a little look and see what you think for yourself. If you want even more free resources, check out this free playlist right now. There's tons more available. As always, all the applicable links are down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.